Oh, no, no, not downstream, buddy, not downstream. I decided to veer off onto a tributary stream. First cast, good lord. Well, nothing at this spot, which really surprises me. This is another extraordinary looking spot coming up here, guys. I mean, look at this. Here we have like a, I don't know, maybe a three foot cascade dropping into this, into this pool here. See what we can do. All right, I think this pool is a lot deeper than I originally imagined that it was. So I'm actually going to let it. There we go, guys. This is a nice fish. All right. Oh, it's getting in the, uh... oh no, 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 not downstream, buddy, not downstream. All right, we got him out of the, uh, out of the fast water. Oh boy, he's fighting hard. I'm interested to see what this fish looks like. Cause he's putting up quite a fight. Quite a fight. Well, he's just refusing to come up. Beautiful fish, look at that, guys. Holy mackerel, look at that brown. Oh, what a nice fish. Beautiful. Wow, what a way to start off the day here, huh? Look at that, guys. Look at that. Just a fantastic brown. That's gotta be a good uh, 17, 18. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. So what is up guys, and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. I decided to get things started off a little early here before the intro, and damn, what a way to start out the day with an exquisite, what, 17, 18 inch brown right here on the beautiful Blackberry River. I mean, wow, guys, I could not have imagined that my day was going to begin like that. And I really hope that's an indicator for how the rest of this day is going to go. Anyhow, so here's the deal, guys. Um, I'm trying to do my social distancing thing, and I'm doing it by working these smaller streams where I don't really have to see much of anybody the entire time that I'm fishing. And I'll tell you what, that strategy is already paying off big time. So um, let me get a line back out here in this pool and see if we can get another fish. Oh yeah, so I don't know if you caught that, but I'm throwing this uh, small, I believe number eight, olive woolly bugger with a little split shot just to get it down uh, because there's no weight tied into this fly. And you know, I put that fly through this pool several times but it wasn't until I really went out of my way to let the bugger get all the way down before I started stripping that I finally got that fish to hit. All right, onto the next pool. 
Ooh, this, this pool is not bad either. Definitely more shallow than the pool we just left, but not bad. It would not surprise me at all if we get a fish out of here. I'm not seeing too much particularly good water. Oh, actually, you know what? I gotta drop it in that pocket over there real quick. I have to. All right, now we have pretty fast water that's kind of being funneled through the stretch of the stream, but we have this nice soft spot right here, right beside the fast water. And so I'm gonna fish just to the outside of that seam and see if there's anything hanging out, just sniping things that come down in the current here. I don't know, guys, I'm looking ahead here and I don't know that I'm seeing too much quality water to prospect. I'm going to uh, walk maybe another 500 feet or so and see what else I can find. And if we don't bump into anything else, we'll change spots, move a little further downriver. guys well I went another 500 feet or so it's probably really hard to hear me here huh okay you could probably hear me a little better now so uh, yeah I walked another 500 feet or so upstream and I was just seeing a lot of low probability water so no sense in just flogging the hell out of uh, water that's too shallow or too fast now is as good a time as any to address what are sometimes the inevitable questions about browns like that. This is a class three wild trout management area, meaning that there are wild trout in this stream, which leads to the inevitable question, do I think that that brown was wild or stocked? And the reality here, guys, is it's just impossible to say on these streams. Um, first of all, this is a regular stocked stream on top of being uh, a class three wild trout management area, even if it's not a fresh stocker. Uh, one characteristic of these wild trout management areas is that they stock them with very small trout, basically just, just fry. And some of those fish are able to hold over, not just one year, but several years. And by the time they've been in the river this long, even though they're stockers, they're going to look every bit as wild as an actual wild fish. And so the reality is, guys, that it's really almost impossible to say. Did you miss me, baby? All right, guys, well, I decided to veer off of Blackberry River onto a tributary stream. And I'm just getting rigged up here. I think I'm going to go with a dry dropper rig here. Now, I'm not really anticipating getting anything on the dry. I'd really be surprised if I get anything on the dry. But um, I just like the presentation of a dry dropper rig better than using a, a, an indicator, even though an indicator is a little more adjustable, a little more versatile. So um, I'm gonna tie in a simulator and we'll see what I'm gonna throw on point and let's get started. Let's get some floating done here. Ooh, a little too much. Crystal clear. All right, guys, no luck on this tributary. Even though the water looked pretty nice, I think I'm gonna switch it up yet again uh, to a new stream 
in a new area. Well guys, a quick 20 minute drive roughly east and we are at our next stream. I'll tell you what, we had such a strong start with that nice brown on Blackberry River and it has just sort of flatlined ever since. So I'm hoping that now that we're on uh, some fresh water, we're gonna be able to turn things around. Guys, I'll tell you what, I thought the technical difficulties were behind me for 2020, but uh, no, no, they're starting early this year. Most of my narration from this point forward came out totally muted. I do have a couple spots where, I don't know, the connector must have seated properly and the original narration did come through, but uh, yeah, the studio editor me is going to have to uh, dub in without further ado. So what you just saw me explaining was that in my quest to try and get at least one more fish to polish off this episode, I was ready to leave Sandy Brook and go elsewhere. And as I was driving away, I glanced over in the gorge and saw a pool that looked so extraordinary, I just had to stop. I also thought that now would be a good time to switch over to some spinning gear just to mix things up a little bit because I know a lot of you guys have been watching me do a whole lot of fly fishing lately. So here I am. I've got a uh, I think a number four sculp snack streamer tied onto my spinning rod here and I'm about to make my first cast. Good lord! This fish still doesn't want to, doesn't want to give up. Wow! All right. Beautiful specimen here. Let's uh, get him back in the river. Right off. Okay, guys. Let's put it right back out there. And Got one guys, we got another. Ah, it's a little brown. Ah, all right, not bad. <laughs> all right guys, there we go. Let's let him go. 